morning. Good morning. Good morning. What a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Yeah. I love Mission Conference. Uh, we've had a great time this week. Uh, we got to speak to a lot of people over the last few days, invite them into church, and uh, sharing the gospel with them. We had uh, one visitor last night from, uh, from that, and so that was a blessing. Uh, you, uh, you never know what God's going to do, uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's good to see uh, fruit and, uh, and of that. Uh, you know, sometimes it takes a while for people to, uh, in New Zealand that's what it is, in a lot of the ways, like people are very wary of, like, like who are you? They'll be friendly. Uh, then they'll hear me talk and they'll be like, well, you're not from around here. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> Sometimes it, it takes a while for people to open up a little bit, but we, we tell them and we keep inviting and we keep being kind as, as much as we can. And, um, and, and God brings an increase. Uh, and we're thankful for that. Uh, if you have your Bibles, uh, and uh, I hope you do, uh, that's the name of our church, right? Uh, let's uh, open to the book of Psalms, and this morning we're looking at Psalm 5 uh, real quickly, and um, this is not a new topic, um, not something that we don't know about, um, but, but if it's in the Bible, it's uh, things we need to know, right? And uh, as you turn in there, uh, I'll read this. Colossians three sixteen says, "Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord." The uh, book of Psalms was um, put together. Uh, and primarily, uh, what was was uh, arranged the way it is um, to be put to music, and it's, it is called the it's been called, it's been called the hymn book of, of the Jews. Uh, in fact, in uh, synagogues, uh, not today, I don't think they're meeting today, but when they do meet, uh, they, they, oftentimes they'll they'll sing song that they sing will be right out of Psalms. Uh, and uh, you know, and so a lot of these ones, uh, and of course, are written by many different writers. Uh, David wrote a lot of them. Solomon wrote some. Moses is attributed, and then there's others. Um, they 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 wrote these these. Um, uh, some are written in the, the style of like a poem. Some are, uh, in, but for the intention, but they wrote from their own personal experience. Many of them. Um, and so they would experience something, uh, whether it's a hard time or, or, or a good time, or a time that they were calling out to God, and they, and they would write it in poem, write it in a song. Uh, and I imagine, um, or in, in, in thinking of some of songs that I like to listen to, uh, probably some of my favorite come from writers or authors who are writing about something they personally experience. Um, there's just something about that. Uh, like when we, uh, one of my favorite hymns is It Is Well With My Soul. Amen. Well, the writer of that went through a horrific tragedy where he lost his family. And he's writing that, right? Though Satan should buffet, though trials should come, right? And, but he's not, he's not, I mean, it's, it's not wrong to, to, to say if I'm going to, for a, for example, if there's a young single guy who's, well, we have a missionary here who's single, Brother Jordan, but if he gets to the mission field, uh, it's not wrong for him to teach what the Bible says about marriage, even though he's not married, right? And, and, it's, and it's not wrong to do that, and he can have a great, tremendous message, uh, uh, but there's something different about someone who's experienced that, right? Uh, uh, and so, uh, man, so, so we, and so in the Psalms, we see a lot of and, and I believe most of it, if not all of it, is written from a personal experience. People have gone through things. Um, we learn from Colossians 3 that there's a threefold purpose to singing, certainly within the church, uh, right? It's to teach and admonish. Now, uh, we, we, we got the teaching thing down, right? Uh, in fact, I love, I love the songs that we, that we uh, teach our kids in junior church and the Sunday school, right? Songs like... Um, Jesus loves me, this I know, 
How do we know that? For the Bible tells it, right? It's, 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 it's teaching, teaching our kids, and really, and it's a great spiritual truth, by the way, that Jesus is real, and Jesus loves me, and we know that because the Bible is true. Amen. Right? That's teaching, teaching through music. And in fact, in fact, we have a wonderful hymn book filled with great uh, doctrine. Now, now uh, our hymn book is not scripture, so there are errors in our hymn book. Did you know that? Because <laughs> it's not scripture, right? <laughs> and so we don't we don't take our new book as that one thousand percent correct. No, that's go from the Bible. We test everything from the scripture. Right? We try to make everything correct. Sometimes we make mistakes, right? Uh, but we teach. But but also, the, the, the Colossians three sixteen is for not only is it for teaching, but it's for admonishing. Now. Now, we have a lot of songs about teaching. There's not a lot of songs about, hey, you were wrong today, get it right. <laughs> Maybe we should. That's, but that's what it's for, right? To admonish, to, hey, you, hey guess what? You're wrong in this. You're wrong here. You need to fix it. Um, <clears throat> you teach new concepts, how to go the right way, warnings of going the wrong way, all right? But also, it's for singing for personal worship. It's also for public worship of the Lord, right? Singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Yeah. But also it's for allowing God's word to establish our hearts. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, right? We put part of part of it, and it's, a, it's, a, it's like a memorization tool, too, to be singing, putting, putting uh, music to scripture is a great way to, to, to sink it down into our heart. Um, and so the, the songs are kind of constructed that way, and, and, and some of the language it uses, uh, uh, a lot of it sometimes refuse, refers to a music, something to do with music. Um, but let's get into uh, let's get into the song. Uh, all right, uh, follow along as I read. I'll read. Uh, I'll just go through the first three verses, Psalm chapter five, verse one through three. The Bible says, "Give ear to my words, O Lord; consider my meditation." Hearken unto the voice of my crying, my King and my God, for unto thee will I pray. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and will look up. Uh, Psalm 5 has been called a, a morning prayer, or the morning prayer, as some uh, other people have termed it that way, but it's because of this opening, it's focused on that. And, but when we're thinking about prayer, and when, when I think about prayer, we're often taught, and rightly so, uh, that it's good to think about others. Right? Right? We, we pray for our families. Amen. It's, it's good to pray for our families. Uh, right? Uh, Abraham prayed for uh, Lot in Sodom. Right? Uh, in fact, uh, Abraham. He negotiated with the negotiates, right? The kind word with God as, as much as he could to try to help Lot. Um, in the book of Job, when, after Job experienced all the, the trials and things that he had went through, um, it wasn't until Job had a change of perspective. And it says, uh, and it, in the last chapter of the book of Job, it says, uh, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. So it is like a, a, an outward turning, an outward focus. It's a, a prayer for others. And then that's good. And we pray for our families. In fact, Job did that in, in the very first chapter uh, of that book. Uh, uh, the book of James uh, mentions that we're to pray for one another. So we pray for other Christians, right? That's why we have prayer requests. That's why we have a prayer list um, uh, in, the, in the back. Um, I love the new way we're, we're doing the prayer list here, where if you can get your list your request in time, but in the service, it's on the list, right? That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, it's just so it's a reminder we can pray for each other, right? Because there are many, there are many of us who need <laughs> prayer. Amen. Let me agree. There are, there's all of us, right? We all need prayer, right? Um, but some of us are going through some different trials and some hard times, and, and, and we need prayer. Um, Jesus said in the book of Matthew that we're to pray for our enemies. Now, you know, that's easy to say, right? Um, you know, when, um, 
It's, it's kind of hard, and, 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 and we see a picture of this in Job as well, but it's hard to, it's hard to pray for somebody when you're bitter against them. Isn't it? It's, it, 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 it's just, it's just hard, right? It's hard to pray. What, what Jesus said, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them which despitefully use you. That's hard stuff. That's hard stuff. But we ought to do that. By the way, I think that's, that's not only are we praying for those who we deem as enemies, but it, but it's a help. It's a help to us. It's a reminder to us. Hey, maybe we should hold on to this stuff. Uh, First Timothy chapter two mentions that we're to pray for our government leaders. Right. In fact, uh, it says, uh, "Exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority." Right. So we pray. We pray for uh, everybody. We, we, we pray intercessory prayers. Lord, help them. Lord, send the gospel to them. Right? We pray for uh, people. We pray for those who uh, are uh, in, uh, in the authority over us. We pray for uh, the, our mayors, our governors, our presidents. Right? Sometimes that's hard. Or it's not the guy you want in there. Right? But we pray for them. We pray. Of course, we pray for our pastors. We pray for our missionaries. Uh, we're so grateful for uh, prayer. Um, I, um, because God, God will, <laughs> oftentimes, he will answer prayers and in ways that we do not expect. Um, and, uh, there was, there was many times, uh, when we were on deputation and, uh, we, uh, and of course, this is back when the kids were younger. Uh, and at one time, uh, we had three in diapers at once. Yes, thank you. <laughs> God bless my wife. Um, and, um, and we were traveling around the country, trying to raise a fork, trying to get to New Zealand. And there was more than one time that we would pull into a church with like $5 in our bank account. And uh, if, if you know anything about raising kids, and most of you do, is they, they like to eat and they need diapers. <laughs> um, and uh, and we pull into a church with 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 no money. The Lord, you're gonna have to do something today. And we're just trusting God, right? Uh, some of those times can get you discouraged. Some of those times get you down and be like, why are we doing this? But let me tell you, every time, every time God provided. Every time. One time we walked into a church, we weren't even scheduled. This pastor didn't know we were coming. And we just we just stopped in. We took, it was one of those times we didn't have the money and then they took up an offer for us. We didn't have to do that. It wasn't expected. And we didn't tell them we knew we needed money, but God knew. God knew we provided. Uh, and time and time again we've seen God do that. There was one time, uh, and I hate to say this, I hate to admit this, um, but um, we're, maybe we're not as spiritual as we think we are sometimes, um, but uh, we, and this is why we're on deputation, and it was one of those moments where we could either buy food or diapers, or we can send our tithe and our faith promise back here. And in, in our super spiritual moment, we hesitated a little, and we thought about that. And we are like, you know what? What, what, what do we do? What do you do? Your, your kids have to eat. They need the diapers. They need all that stuff. Lord, Lord, what do you want us to do? Uh, and and then, and then we hesitated, but then we decided, no, we're going to send our time and mission. We're just going to trust the Lord. And you know what happened? God provided. God provided. Because uh, uh, he, he did. We didn't know where it was coming from, but God did. Um, and so we pray. We pray for other people, and that's why we have these prayer cards, uh, right? So, so you, you, we can remember to pray for missionaries. Amen. Uh, and, uh, and and it's not a small thing, by the way. It's not a small thing. That's a big thing. If you don't ever give a dollar, and all you do is pray, thank God for that, because God will use your prayers. Right? What's that hymn? Little is much, and God is in it. Man, prayer is not a little thing. Prayer is a big thing. Pray for us. So pray. Take these and pray. Um, Amen. Right?
right? So it's good and right so to pray for other people, and that's good. Did you, but did you also know, and sometimes maybe this is hard, but it's also good and right to pray for ourselves. It's okay to do that. Uh, it's okay to ask for help. Uh, that's, that's tough for, for uh, usually us men, <laughs> right? Maybe not. Maybe it's just me. Uh, you know, why don't you, you know, you got to fix a car. Oh, I can do it myself, right? Two weeks later, you know, he's still working on the car. <laughs> See, nowadays we don't have to stop and ask for directions anymore. We got it on our phones. But there was a time before phones, uh, back when everything was black and white, right? Where, uh, where a husband and wife would go driving and they get lost. And the, and the husband was like, oh, I know where I'm going. The wife would say, hey, why don't you stop and ask for directions? I have to figure this out. Am I the only one? Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'm telling them myself here. Huh? <laughs> I, think, I think we can, if we're not careful, we can think that praying for ourselves is wrong. But if there's anything we can learn from the writings of David, uh, that that praying for ourselves is a very necessary thing. It's a very necessary thing. Uh, and then that's certainly what we can learn as New Testament Christians looking back uh, in, in many of these psalms that David has written. Uh, so, uh, in verse number, okay, in these first three verses, I want you to notice real quickly, notice that, uh, that David is seeking God in the morning. He's seeking God in the morning. Number one, I should notice, it's, it's, it's a disciplined prayer. It's a disciplined prayer. Look at verse number one. It says, give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. You see, notice he mentions the word meditate. And you can he, David uses that word often uh, in, in the Psalms. But, but, but what he's talking about is, is, is spending time thinking about God's word. Thinking about God's word. And dwelling on God's word. In New Zealand, we would have... Um, but once a year, we'll have a Sunday school contest, usually in the early part of the year. And then part of that contest is including scripture memorization, to memorize scripture. And by the way, it's a good thing for us to memorize scripture. It's a very, very helpful one. But the idea of memorizing scripture is not just to be able to recite the words from our mind, but that the idea is that it will sink down into our heart that we'll know it. We'll know from uh, down here, and so uh, it's good to know the scripture. And so, as you, one of the the benefits of trying to memorize scripture is, is, is you thinking about the words and what it means and how it applies, and, and you meditate on it. Right? Psalm chapter one, verse two says, "But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law that we meditate day and night." Talking about the blessing, you want to be blessed? Uh, spend time meditating on God's word, right? Uh, Joshua 1.8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written there. Psalm 119 verse 15 says, I will meditate in thy precepts, have respect unto thy ways. Uh, Psalm 19 verse 14 says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. See, pray, see, when we pray, it's not some, we're not seeking some mystical plane of existence, right? We're not trying to reach another, you know, spiritual level. We're just simply recognizing that God is greater than us and has uh, given us the ability to come to him with our requests. I'm thankful for that. Amen. Uh, we can come, we no longer have to have this, uh, a, this Old Testament law system of going to a priest and offering, uh, uh, you know, bringing an offering and, and having him offer our prayers for us. No, we can come boldly to the throne of grace. We're so blessed. See, the world, the world's view of religion is that uh, all religions will get you to the same place. Uh, we're, you know, all, all roads lead to Rome. Uh, well, that's, that's good if you're going to Rome, <laughs> but we're not going to Rome. Right? Thank God we're not going to the phone. That's quite the opposite. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, was that, that, uh, 
fix our wounded uh, soul. So, you know, the, the, the kid that, that's that idea of like everyone's getting to heaven, everyone's getting through that spiritual pain by their own thing. Uh, it's a cute fantasy movie, but it's, it's not true biblically. See, mankind is always seeking to get their idea of God, to try to get to God their own way. And, and the scriptures are full of that, right? Uh, you know, from, from Cain, right? Cain said, oh, I'll bring my vegetables. I know, I know, I know you bring the sacrifice, but I'm going to bring what I make, right? Man has always done that. But what Jesus say? Jesus says, I am the way. The truth and the life. He says, he says, I'm the way, right? There's, there's no other way. There's no other way to get to God. You, you, you can't you can't find God another way. You can't pray enough to get to God. You can't uh, you know do, uh, do enough uh, um, um, good works to get to God. You can't you, you know cause pain to yourself enough to get to God. No, it's through Jesus and Him alone. So when we meditate, we think on the scripture, and, uh, and you know what? That takes some effort on our part, doesn't it? It takes some time, it'll take time, and it takes effort. We have to think about it. Uh, it takes discipline. So that this is a discipline, um, a disciplined prayer. Because he's spending time meditating on the things of God. It takes discipline. In fact, that's one of the purposes of fasting, too, uh, right? Is, is, uh, not a, is, is to kind of focus our whole being on, 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 on God, right? And, and so we learn to discipline our physical bodies in that way. Uh, and we did, we've done this in New Zealand uh, when, uh, when um, uh, leading up to one of our biggest outreaches uh, of the year we do in February, it's leading up to that event. Well, we spend time as a church uh, fasting and praying towards that event. Uh, and, and, and God blesses and God honors us. So we see the psalmist here spending time meditating on God and his word. It's, it's a disciplined prayer. Also, I notice that it is a directed prayer. You see this in verse number two. It says, hearken unto the voice of my cry, my king and my God, for unto thee will I pray. Right? Amen. He's emphasizing who he's praying to. Right? And, 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 and like he, he says it, and like <laughs> he repeats himself, like, like, like just, just in case you're not clear, right? I'm praying to my king, my God, and unto thee, God, I'm praying to you. Right? Amen. He's not praying to any other God. He's not praying to any f other former believers who died and went to heaven, right? He's not praying to a saint. He's not praying to an angel. He's not praying to any earthly or heavenly deity. He's not going to a priest to pray for him. No, he's going to God directly. Amen. When the veil of the temple was torn, the way to God was open to all. No longer we have that Old Testament system. No longer we depended on a priestly system to get to God. Every man, woman, child can approach the very God of creation. Psalm 19 verse 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament showeth his handiwork. Right? Every culture, every culture that has ever existed can look up to the sky and can see the movement of the sun and the movement of the, uh, of the moon and they can see the, 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 the stars and the galaxies. There's a, there's a town in New Zealand, uh, I can't remember the name of it, uh, I believe it's on the South Island, where they even, uh, they're, they're, uh, they try to have as little light pollution as possible. So even their street lamps are, are like pointed downward. And, and so when you look up at the sky, you can see the stars. And, and when I say see the stars, have you ever about been out in the middle of nowhere and you look up and you see the stars? Man, I think I think our generation is missing out on that. Uh, and because because we're around lights all the time, especially when we're I mean we're around the cities, you, know, you look up and you see, you don't see everything that God has, and it, and it's kind of masking kind of masking what God has created. Uh, uh, you know. It would be bad, it would be bad if all the electricity stopped working, right? It would be a bad thing. It would be a horrible thing. But let me say this. We would look up and we could see the heavens declaring the glory of God. 
And we can see the, the, the handiwork of God in the permanent. We can look up and see it. New Zealand has um, many historical ties to England. Uh, many places are named after, uh, in fact, the, the university in Wellington is called Victoria University, named after the Queen. Um, uh, Palmerston North, a city just far, uh, just about a far and a half north from us, is named after a famous prime minister in England. Uh, the Queen of England uh, was officially the Queen of New Zealand. Uh, and when she passed it, of course, it's big news. Um, but so they, now we have a new king, King Charles, in uh He's the king of England, but also he's the king of New Zealand as well. Now, getting an audience with King Charles today was probably pretty difficult for us, wasn't it? Especially as, as Americans, like, who are you? Uh, but I um, am also, a, 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 in addition to being a USA citizen, I'm a resident of New Zealand. I have an official paperwork. So I'm a, I'm a resident of a commonwealth of England. Um, and, um, but even for me, and even for a citizen of New Zealand, or even a citizen of England, it would be difficult, if not impossible, to try to set up a personal uh, interview or to talk with the king himself. Now, imagine if God ran his way of uh, us approaching him the way the king of England runs his territories, right? Who would be able to approach him? Uh, only a select few. Only, you know, of, you know, whoever's in the elite class or who's got enough money or who's been voted into those places, right? Uh, and, and so if, if we had a request that we wanted to give to the king, we'd have to give it probably to some representative who had to give it to his boss and his representative. We could hope that maybe the king would hear us, right? Thankfully, thankfully, when Jesus died on the cross, he became our intercessor, right? Jesus prayed for man. Imagine that. Jesus prays for us. Uh, we no longer have to go through representatives. We don't, I, right? I don't have to uh, approach the, the, the ambassador of New Zealand and say, hey, I, I want to speak to the king of England. <laughs> he would probably lock me out of the building, right? Uh, right? We don't have to go through these things, right? To, to, to seek forgiveness, to, we can ask God for ourselves. We go directly to the source. Thank God for that. Directly to the source. Um, it, there's, a, there's a lot of um, bottled water companies that, that claim they come from the source. Right? I'm pretty sure most of them probably don't. <laughs> what are we paying for? I don't know. <laughs> but we feel better about it, right? <laughs> um, but there, there is a uh, there's a couple spots in New Zealand where, where where water will come out and people will actually go there and fill up their jugs with water, right? To go right into the source to get that water, right? It's not going to a third party. Nobody's adding anything to it. They're not taking it away. Just get it right to the source. Hey, we can come right to God, right? We go right to God. You don't you don't need me to get to God. You know, as 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 faithful and as wonderful as Pastor Maple is, and, and he will pray for you and he will do all kinds of things for you. But you do not have to go to Pastor Maple to get to God. You can get there yourself. You can pray to him. Right? Yeah. Fact, you don't even have to wait for an invitation call to pray and ask God. You can pray, you can pray right now and talk to God. You can pray to him whenever. Whenever. Yeah. You, ever, you ever have a, a time in your life where you needed prayer? Aren't you glad that you could just in that moment say, God, I need help? You didn't think, oh, I gotta wait until I can get a hold of somebody. Oh, they're busy, they're not answering. Oh, who's gonna pray for me? No, we can pray to God whenever, wherever, whenever. Not only whenever we can pray for God, wherever. Wherever you're at. Whether you're at church, you're at home, you're at work, you're at school, you're on the road, wherever you are. And you can pray to God, whoever you might be. Man, woman, child, you can come to God. That was in the prayer that uh, Jesus gave as an example to the disciples. When you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed by thy name, be thy name. First Timothy chapter 2 says, For there is one God, one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Hebrews chapter 7 
says, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Thank God for that. Thirdly, I want you to notice in these uh, first three verses in Psalm 5 that it is also not only a disciplined prayer, it is a directed prayer, but it is a timely prayer. It's a timely prayer. Uh, notice he, he, in verse 3, he says, O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer to thee. In fact, he says it twice. My voice shall thou hear in the morning, O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer. Almost like he's trying to tell us something, emphasize something. By the way, that is true. In the Bible, when you see something repeated, it's because there's an emphasis on that, right? Uh, so he prays in the morning. Uh, and uh, and in, in New Zealand, we uh, every other month on a Saturday morning, we, we have a men's prayer breakfast. And, uh, and uh, Miss Janet and, and, and my wife Joy will, will cook breakfast for the men of the church. And we gather together and we share our burdens and our prayer requests with one another. And we pray together. Such a, a wonderful time. Every uh, first Sunday of the month, we uh, and we'll, we meet during the Sunday school hour. We meet together for prayer, and then we and then we have a breakfast. But we come together first just to pray, and we, we share burdens, and we just spend a moment of time of praying. Um, so so David is praying in the morning. It's it's early in his day. It's before the cares of the world come in. It's before the rush of the day hits. It's before. All the things that happen as soon as, soon as we get up, and and, and and maybe that's uh, our phones could be a great tool, but it also can be a detriment to us. You know, to start stinging. Right? Sleep, right? It's, it could be a distraction to us. There's many mornings growing up. So thankful for my dad and uh, and his example. There's many mornings we would wake up, uh, particularly. For, for us, I would remember on Saturday mornings because during that time of life, on Saturday mornings, they had dedicated from like 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. some great television watching for kids. Uh, and during that time, I think at 6 a.m. was the Three Stooges. Thank you, Bob. The Three Stooges. But we get up early, like we hate getting up for school. Man, we get up for school. But Saturday morning comes. Oh, we were up. We <laughs> get to see what the Larry Mulcair is. But what would happen is we would get up and we'd sneak down the stairs as quietly as we can. And we'd sneak past the living room and in the living room, uh, without a doubt, we'd find my dad on his face praying before God. Praying before God. He would pray in the morning. David is imploring the listener, imploring the reader of Psalms, reminding them that he said, I pray in the morning. Psalm 63 says, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. And uh, on and on, the Bible talks about that. So, I, I promised you it was nothing new, but it's something good just to be remembered of. That God is a God who answers prayer. He's a God who listens to our prayer. And uh, he's a God who's uh, probably the most important thing is he's available for our prayers. So, uh, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day, this opportunity we can gather together. Lord, I pray for this church as we're uh, seeking to um, to uh, support faith promise, Lord, that, that you guide us into what, uh, how much we should give for this year. I pray you be with uh, Brother Larry as he speaks in the uh, morning service, and uh, thank you for your goodness to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You are dismissed. Good night.